Hey everybody, Scott Lear here at B Chord. We finally get to catch up with the one and only Mr. Sam Grow. How are you, sir? Yeah, good, man. Thank you guys so much for having me up. No problem, man. Here we are sitting in Ocean City, New Year's Eve at Cowboy Coast. We couldn't ask for a better night to do this. Yeah, man, we've done this the last uh, two years and it's, I love it for so many reasons. I'm a Maryland boy, so it's nice to be in my home state and it's one of the best New Year's deals ever. And it's a great room, great sound, fun vibe, so it's cool. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, Southern Maryland native, so give us a little bit of your background. Tell everybody, I know you have a ton of fans or family out there uh, that know a lot about you, but you grew up in Southern Maryland. How'd you get into music and how'd you get on this path? So uh, I grew up in Mechanicsville, Maryland, and uh, it's deep Southern Maryland, just over the Virginia line. And uh, I was raised there, but also I lived in Kansas, Winfield, Kansas, for six, of my, six years of my life, from six to 12. My dad's a power lineman, he worked on power lines. And while we were out in Kansas, really the only time I got to spend time with my old man is when we were in a bucket truck on the weekends. If I wanted to ride with him, I'd ride. But he's blue collar, he didn't talk much. He's extremely, he's from Missouri, he's extremely country. And um, so our conversation was just him putting on a record and playing it. My dad had me when he was 40. So the music that he listened to was just old country music, old soul music, old, you know, southern rock type stuff, and that's what we vibed on, and that's really how I got into music. And my dad can sing really well. He never tried for it or anything, but he really sounded he sounded like Elvis. And uh, he did it, and I was just like, man, I want to be able to sing like that. And uh, so it was really my dad that inspired me to, to get into music. That's awesome. Great story. So a lot of people know you have the new EP out, The Blame, okay? I uh, got, what, how many songs on there? We got eight songs? Six to eight? Right around that. Um, absolutely love it. How long of a process was that for you? Uh, kind of go into a little bit of the writing process and how that all worked. Yeah, I mean, I write every day. Um, when I'm in Nashville, which is, you know, 65 days out of the year, all those days that I'm there, I'm writing, I'm set up on books, and, and I have a studio in my house, too, to where I'm constantly writing when I'm off the road, and I write on the road, too. Um, so, you know, that EP came about of me writing just hundreds of songs, and then, you know, the, the label at the time that I was signed to um, s sifted through them, found a, a good you know, five, four or five that they loved. And then just as I got off that label, I wrote the song, The Blame. And uh, I went through a real weird time in 2016. Honest country music is what I love to write. So I wrote, you know, an uh, honest country song. They loved it, fortunately, and put it on that record and let me put it on there even though they didn't own that one. And uh, so it's, it's kind of worked out good for us, you know, so. That's really good. And you stole my thunder because that's what I was going to say. One of my favorites is the blame on there. And uh, I absolutely am a sucker for a sad country song. And that is a good, sad country song right there. Thank you. Man. So um, I know uh, you're very big uh, on saying that we were talking about, about the fans, you know, not fans, family. You have a great family if you look at that. So I'd like give you a minute or two here so you can talk to them and uh, tell everybody how that's worked for you in building that family base. Yeah, I mean, we're an independent I'm an independent artist now. Um, we had our moments in there when we had our deals, but I mean, the only reason why I got into those offices, the only reason why I got to those desks was because we were a honky tonk band that played state to state, town to town, small town, blue collar, country loving people. And uh, that's the only reason why we got where we are. And I don't have fans, I can't stand that word. They work hard. I mean, country listeners are hardworking people. They're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And on the weekend, they want to come out and forget about, you know, the hard week they had to work and they want to listen to music. And, you know, fortunately, I know how hard they work for their dollars. So them putting it, reaching in their pocket and supporting what we do, that's not a fan thing. That's a family thing. So we got a lot of good fans and friends and family out there, not fans. So, yeah. That is great. I love it. You could, couldn't have put it better. I, when I read that, I read a little bit that you had on your About Me about it, and I'm like, man, that is that is true. And and I'm sure they all see that in the, the followers. It, it, it makes sense, you know? It totally makes sense. Okay, start, start this car. One of my favorite songs on that EP. Love it from the sound, the guitar sound in it, uh, to everything. So give me a little bit about that song. Explain it to everybody. Yeah, I wrote that song with Larry McCoy and uh, Bart Butler. Um, Bart Butler does a lot of uh, John Party stuff. He produced the entire last record uh, for John Party. He wrote a lot of songs on there. He wrote Dirt on My Boots. He wrote, he's got a ton of hits. And then Larry McCoy um, did, has a Thomas Rhett hit on there. So he's, 
they're two really great veteran riders, and I was just blessed enough. Bart had heard some of my music and wanted to write with me, and we got in the room, and that song just kind of fell out. I was talking, We were talking about cars and trucks, and uh, I love anything Chevy, all things Chevy. And uh, we were talking about how the year, you know, specific year, 57 of Chevy's cars, trucks, was just a great year for Chevy. And, man, we just started writing about it, how we could turn that into something, and, and we did. So I was lucky to be in the room with a couple pros. So. <laughs> That's a great one. Okay, so I'm a firm believer in a good country song has a catchy title, right? Yeah. It can have a double meaning the whole nine yards. Drinking About You yeah. is one of my favorites. As soon as I looked at it, going down the list, I'm like, oh, i got to listen to this for that reason. So tell us a little bit about that one. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the... Well, I say on stage when we play it, um, you know, it, it's, I feel like guys, we process feelings a little different than females do. You know, females are a lot more in touch with those kind of, those kind of things and those kind of feelings and thoughts. So us fellows, when we go through a breakup, instead of really sitting and thinking and trying to pick it all apart, we definitely drink through those processes. So instead of thinking about her, you're drinking about her. So that's how it came for it. And I wrote it with a guy named Justin Ebock and uh, Stephen Dale Jones. Justin Ebox again, an awesome rider. Stephen Dale Jones wrote One More Day for Diamond Rio. Just two guys that really know how to pick apart a story and blessed enough to be in the room with them too. Some big names there, oh, some dude, big man. songs, I'm you so know. Lucky. I, <laughs> I'm so blessed. How I felt, the market of riders that I fell into, genuinely, I, I'm so thankful every day. I mean, Nashville has been my college on, on songwriting and I've just, I really fell into a great group of writers and even The Blame, um, I wrote that with Jake Mitchell and Bryce Long. Bryce Long's written so many good songs and one of my favorites is uh, he wrote Like a Cowboy for Randy Hauser and I feel like that really has started to like curve music, country music back to country music and uh, you know just good honest storytelling and, and those guys are so good man so I'm blessed to, to get to have some really good writers on my EP. That's awesome man and Sam we all know it is no surprise you are a huge motorcycle oh, yeah. advocate and lover yeah. uh, give us a little bit of how that all came about that you got into the motorcycle deal. Uh, it's a funny story that we're in Ocean City and me telling you this story my drummer Joe who I was looking at earlier you can't see him but he's over here uh, he was messing around one day and was like, man, we got to rent scooters. And I was like, man, I don't want to rent a scooter. And he's like, no, bro, we got to do it. So we ended, up, yeah, we, ended up, we ended up riding we ended up riding scooters, you know. And he was like, man, let's just buy one of these things. It'll be fun. We can have some scooters in the trailer, and then we park. We can just cruise them around. So like, okay. So we, uh, we bought scooters, and I was like, man, these things just don't go fast enough. So I went and ended up going to Indian uh, and uh, Music City Indian in, in Nashville and checked out some of their bikes and love their bikes. But I wanted to be able to ride for a really long time. And uh, I have a really good buddy. His name's Jeff Wanamaker. He owns All American Harley Davidson in Southern Maryland. Okay. And uh, he hooked me up with one of the sweetest, sexiest motorcycles. It's a Road Glide. And, uh, Is that the green one? Yeah, okay. the green machine, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's number 200. There's only 200 of them made, wow. and I have one of them, thanks to Jeff. And if y'all are ever looking for a bike, you should go see him. He's the man. And uh, so I started riding, and honestly, I don't know what I did before riding a motorcycle. Like, it, it's my release. And, you know, the stage has always been a release for me, but being in this, in this bus and riding all the time, to be able to get out and sit on a bike and just be in your own head and, you know, ride, it, it's completely – just so much therapy I, I get it and i love it and i'll never stop i'm so happy that i got into that you know <laughs> that's awesome man. yeah that's great okay so we were chatting a little bit before you got some new music coming up yeah, can you can you tease everybody with a little bit here yeah good segue uh actually riding my motorcycle um i wanted to when i ride i like to listen to skinner i like to listen to almond brothers i like to listen to brooks and dunn i'm a 90s baby so i grew up on all that you know all that kind of country music and you know rock stuff you know and i wanted to make that that's when i moved to nashville that's all i ever wanted to make really were those kind of records and when i was on the deals i wasn't allowed to make those kind of records you go in and you play them the kind of music and they're like you know try to be more like luke bryan or be more like dustin lynch and uh i mean it's great i appreciate their process but i never got to really dig into what i wanted to do so uh this past few months i, I got off that deal now i'm able to do whatever i want and uh, I made this new record. It's coming out January 19th. It's available for uh, pre-order January 8th. It's called A Little Like Me, which is uh, appropriate because now I get to really show my family. And uh, for the most part, a lot of my followers who've been following me forever since I was a baby 
they know that this is the kind of music I love. So they've been patient, and they've been very kind on my last two records, and I think they liked the, that stuff, but now we're getting ready to get back to everything that we've, you know, I'm a, I'm a rocker at heart, a rocker with twang, and I have a rock and roll band, you know, and I got to use my guys, my band, which Nashville was never big on either. So I'm excited to get into this, this next one. So y'all look out for it, pre-order it, please. My drummer Joe has like 1,900 kids, and that's how we pay for them, so. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. We're going to go to the fun stuff here now, okay? Uh, quick ones, and we'll, and we'll rattle through. In 2018, Sam Grow will tour a whole bunch, a whole bunch. <laughs> we're we're uh, going to be in a minimum of at least 25 states this year. So we'll be, uh, we're, we're going to be touring really hard. Come and see us, man. Come out to a show. Some of your favorite venues in Maryland. Oh gosh, uh, Ramshead Live, Cowboy Coast, um, one of my favorites that I grew up in. Um, it's unfortunately not really doing music anymore, but it was called Hotel Charles. So that was my favorite, one of my favorite spots. Um, God, there's so many, man. Uh, just a ton. I just love playing in Maryland in general, so it's it's good. That's great. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Highlight so far. Number one highlight so far in your career. Oh wow. I'm a uh, I'm a big like I said a huge Brooks and Dunn fan, and we got to open up for Ronnie Dunn, and uh, I was I'm the kind of guy that if I if you're my idol I don't want to meet you, because I'm scared that you might be an ass and then I'm not gonna like you anymore, <laughs> so uh, I, we played and opened for Ronnie, Ronnie uh, actually came off of his bus and listened to us play, wow. and um, I didn't expect him to say anything at all, but we got done and we. Used, at that time in the set, we had a ZZ Top song in the set, and Brooks and Dunn and ZZ Top did a whole tour together. We came down, I came around the ramp, and Ronnie Dunn himself rolls up on the in a golf cart and was like, "Hey man, there's only one other band that I've ever heard play that song better," and he said, "It's ZZ Top." Wow. He said, "Great job, you guys did a great job." It's my best moment. <laughs> my, That's hard to been, beat. Yeah, I could have been done right there. So. All right, so here's the hardest one. This interview with B Chord has been amazing. <laughs> So much fun. I promise I paid him. I yeah, paid him to do that one. Don't tell your friends to follow my man. That's just rude. You tag your friends. Hashtag it. Tell everybody. They got to follow this page, man. It's awesome. It's got good stuff going on. He's only four and a half months in, already killing the game. <laughs> and I did not pay him for that one. Maybe I did. Here's a, here's a 50. No. <laughs> All right. So I ask every single artist that I interview one question, and I'm going to ask you the same one. You're stranded on an island. You can take one instrument. Okay, and you could be specific, sentimental value, the whole nine yards. What would the one instrument be and why? Oh, man. If I could take one instrument, it would, be, <laughs> <laughs> it would be my, uh, my PRS acoustic. I love it. Um, PRS has been such an amazing company to us. And uh, that acoustic, this particular acoustic that I have, they're kind enough to let me have. And uh, it means a lot to me that that company of such size cared and believed enough enough to, to let me have a guitar and I would I, I gotta have a guitar with me and uh, I would definitely take that one it's a beautiful one I'd be terrified if it being in the sun but I would bring it <laughs> that's great that is awesome well everybody thank you uh, Sam Grow January 8th new yeah, album dropping you get a song instantly when you down a pre when you pre-order the record you get a, a little like me instant so go and get that thing man awesome follow him if you're not already on everything Spotify Instagram Facebook all the goodies at Bcord615, we truly appreciate it. Give us a follow as well. Thank you all so much, and we will talk to you next time. Yeah, Thanks, man. man. Thank you so much for having <laughs> no me. Problem.